Hello world, welcome to the second of the absolute basics of Vim. You can find the previous video linked in the top right where we stopped at changing stuff. In this one, we'll start with a few changing scenarios, look at more text objects, talk about other operations, and a little about another one of Vim's modes. All right, we're gonna be in this Java file for most of this video, and for the first task, I want to change this line to create a new Shinigami instead of the human line. One way to do it is being at the start of the line to send ct semicolon to change till semicolon and type out the changes. By the way, you can use control P or N to autocomplete from existing text in open buffers. Or let's first undo by pressing a U. The other way to go about achieving this is to change the first two words. So c2w and type shinigami rem then do ci double quote to change inside double quotes and type rem then capital w to jump to the first character after space cw to change word to new age capital f capital h to land on the h before the cursor cw to change the word to shinigami again it seemed like a lot, so let's restore the line with capital U. A lowercase u would individually undo the changes, while an uppercase u restores the entire line. Instead of pressing u multiple times, I can press an uppercase u to restore the entire line. And I'm setting control R to redo stuff, by the way. C to W should not be a surprise, as we've already seen this pattern before, just that the operation was different. The next operation though, ci double quote, is a little different as i double quote is not similar to any of the motions seen before. These are called text objects. I've made a quickie on them that you can check by clicking on the link on the top right. Anyway, they go in the same place as uh, motions but are more context aware. You can do stuff like what we just did. We can talk about some other examples like changing inside brackets with CIB or deleting with DIB. When it comes to text objects, you mainly have two options, either inside or around. We've used inside in all the previous cases. We could also do DAB to delete around brackets, which deletes stuff inside and also the brackets. Or D A double quote to achieve a similar outcome. Anyway, uh, back to the task. We were creating a Shinigami object. After changing the name to Rem, I want to change the age to a different number. If I press W, then it will land me on the quote because punctuation is also considered a word for this motion. Vim provides capital W, which jumps across spaces does not care about punctuation but the spaces so w from here takes us to the bracket but a capital w from the space from the same place lands us on the h then there's nothing new cw to change the h capital f capital h cw type shinigami i do want to talk about one more interesting key here so let's capital u the line and start by changing just the type to Shinigami. We need to do that same operation on the next human word. So I'll make the cursor jump to uh, that word with F capital H and press dot or period. And that was the interesting key. It repeats the previous change. If the changes are more complex and you want to repeat them, you can use Vim macros. To see an example, you can check out the quickie on it. Now. Let's look at a few other text objects. Here, I've got the script for this video for the editing task. You're in the middle of a word. What would you do to delete the word? B, to go to the beginning of the word, then DW. That's absolutely fine, although we could leverage text objects and do DAW to delete a round word. You could also do DIW, which will not eat the space. Here. I can make it clearer by going into another one of Vim's modes called visual by pressing V and then doing AW. 
or IW. By the way, you can again hit the escape key to come back to the normal mode from the visual mode. You can see that it's selecting a space with A, but not with I. We'll talk about visual mode later. Let's look at some other text objects. You're inside a paragraph, more precisely, a block of text surrounded by empty lines, and you want to get rid of the entire block. You can press DAP to delete around paragraph, or CIP to change inner paragraph to some new content. The differences between A and I variants remain similar, where A selects one of the white spaces, but I stays inside the object. You've got a load of other text objects that you can look up in the documentation. Colon H text objects. You can also find a few other examples in uh, the Vim Quickie about text objects. Now, let's talk about other operations, starting with copy-pasting text. So, the key for copy is Y, not C, because it's already taken for change, and Y is for yank. So, just like the other operations, this one also takes a motion. I can do YW to yank a word, or Y4W to yank four words. To paste stuff, you have to hit P. There's also capital P to put text before a cursor, unlike the lowercase p that puts it after the cursor. Say you want to copy this entire line and paste it. When on the line, press YY to copy the line, then P to put it below, or capital P to put it above. You see how YY copied the line? DD deletes the line, and surprise, surprise, CC changes the line. The pattern, if you press the operation key twice, Vim performs that operation on the line. If you do right angle bracket twice, which is uh, another operation to indent stuff, it indents the line. You could use the dent operation, left angle bracket, on the text surrounded by curly braces by hitting left angle bracket I capital B to dent one level all the lines surrounded by the curly braces. And on the same ground, let's also look at the equal key, which is for fixing the indentation. Applying the same grammar again, can you guess the keys to fix the indentation of the lines inside this method? It is equal I capital B. Although the equal operator will not fix the indentation most of the times in languages like Python, where indentation itself is used to mark the beginnings and endings of code blocks. Before ending this part, I'd like to talk about one of the features of Vim that absolutely blew my mind. So it's been about 8 minutes and 10 seconds since editing this file. If I want to restore this file to the way it was 8 minutes ago, I can do colon earlier 8m. After traveling back in time, if I wish to travel just a little ahead, I can do colon later 30 seconds. We can also travel by another unit, days, like earlier one day, or even later 365 days, and Vim will actually write the code for you. That brings us to the end of the part. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.